And the best advice I could give you on how to save money if you're looking to get around the interior of Thailand at no real sacrifice in quality either. Today's episode of Tempest TV is brought to you by Panda Remit, but more on that later in the video. How's it going today, guys? I hope everybody is doing well. Today's subject, something that you're gonna need if you're coming to Thailand, regardless of whether it be vacation or if you're planning on moving here, any country for that matter, you're gonna need money, right? The biggest thing about money is everybody needs more of it. We don't wanna waste all of it. Since I've been in Thailand two years, I have learned quite a bit. That first year that I was here, I wasted a lot of money. So in today's video, that's what we're doing. We're talking money. We're talking skrill, dollars, ducats, bank, coin, whatever you wanna call it. And how when you get to Thailand, you can keep more of yours. It is yet another gloomy day here in Jong Tien. It's nice though, it's not hot. If you guys notice that the camera angles are a bit shoddy today, my fault. I broke another tripod. This same tripod I keep buying, it's great until it's not. So I don't have a tripod. I've just got this little tiny one. So we'll make do, but if the angles are a little bit funky, well, now you know why. Okay, first things first. If you're planning on bringing cash, let's talk about the logistics of that because it's not just bring it, exchange it. It's a little more intricate than that. So all the bills you do bring need to be high quality. No bad creases, no tears, and especially no writing. Even the creases from your wallet, if you're a guy, they can t put little tears in them after a while. And one, they might not accept the bill at all. And even if they do accept it, they're gonna give you a lower exchange rate for it. So I advise just getting an envelope putting all the money in there so it lays nice and flat, keep it somewhere safe, and you should be good to go. Now, the other thing about bills is try to avoid bringing small denominations. We'll talk dollars. Try to avoid bringing fives, tens, twenties. Try to bring at least $50 bills or higher because just like with tears, the higher denominations of bills are gonna get you a better exchange rate. Now, if you're only exchanging small amounts, this difference isn't gonna be too big of a deal. It's usually one bot, maybe like 1.2, the difference from 10s and 20s to 50s and 100s. But you know, if you're bringing a big majority of cash, maybe you're gonna be here for a month and you wanna just trade it all in at once, that does add up. You're gonna lose out on a few thousand bot during that exchange and a few thousand bot goes a long way. Now, when you do land at the airport, there will be exchanges inside the airport. And all I really advise doing with those is getting what you need to maybe just get to your hotel or you know, for taxis, if you need to buy a SIM card right away, exchange just enough for that. Get your stuff and then wait till you get out of the airport because the exchanges you will get to once you get out of there are gonna have much better rates. Now, another great way to save money once you do get here is having all the proper apps. We all live in our phones now and if you don't have it, you can survive, but having a few of these you know, select apps will 100% get you better deals. A lot of them will just help with your convenience of being here too. I'm not gonna go into mad detail on every one. If you are interested in knowing which apps you should download before you get here, I will put a link to that video down in the description. But just to rattle off a few, the Bolt app is generally the best for taxis. It's usually got the best prices. There seems to be always riders or drivers available. Food Panda or Line Man, which are comparable to Uber Eats or Postmates, things like that. Those are generally gonna be the best delivery apps. It'll, it's generally all the same restaurants, but those two seem to always have discounts for 80 to 100 baht off. So if you've got a, you know, a hangover night or maybe you're jet lagged in the hotel, those are the good ones for ordering food. If you're looking for stuff to do in Thailand, activities, if you wanna go to temples, national parks, things like that, things you're gonna need tickets for, I highly, highly recommend downloading Kluk. K-L-O-O-K. -O -O -K. None of these are sponsored, by the way. These are all actually apps that I use. Kluk is great for, it's kind of like Groupon in America. You can just buy tickets to all kinds of stuff for huge discounts. There's a temple here in Patea that's really popular called the Sanctuary of Truth. And usually I think it's 500 baht to get in. On Kluk, I got my ticket for 150. And then last but not least, 12Go is a great one for getting around the interior of Thailand. You can hop around in Thailand super easy, which is another point we'll get into a bit later in the video. But on 12Go, you can book everything from taxis, you know, private vans, buses, trains, ferries, a little bit of everything. Some of the things you buy tickets for from them, the pickup process is a little bit intricate, but totally doable. And compared to the other third-party sites, they generally have the best prices. Okay, banks, 
and ATMs. These are 100% the easiest way to just essentially give away money during your time in Thailand. So this one is really important. First things first, if you're bringing your card from America, most credit cards are gonna be fine, but a debit card, especially if you're planning on doing withdrawals in Thailand, which you should avoid if you can, but if you are, you wanna make sure that your bank doesn't charge an additional international fee, which a lot of them do. I know most places are getting better about it now. There's quite a few that if you're not paying attention, it's four or five dollars every single time you use the ATM, and that will add up really quick. If you are gonna pull money from the ATM, do so in big intervals. If you're gonna be here for three weeks, I know it sounds kind of sketchy. It's better to you know pull for multiple days at a time. If you're spending 2,000 a day, don't go to the ATM every single day because by the time you get home, before you realize it, you have two or $300 in ATM fees. And you know, some people might say, oh, well, you know, it's only 220 baht per transaction, which is like $6. And yeah, that's not a lot of money to some people, but the way that I look at it is, is why just give it away? So it doesn't really make sense to me to not avoid it if you can. And if you're planning on living in Thailand or at least staying here for a long period of time, it is 100% worth the investment to open a Thai bank account. One, it's gonna make banking easier for when you're out and about almost every single place you go to. Even the street vendors like in the carts and stuff, they all have QR codes and you can just scan it. You don't have to carry cash, which is great. And for a lot of things that you'll need to pay for while you're here, all kinds of, you know, like utilities, internet, things like that, they are all connected to the Thai banking apps. So it just makes all of that way more smooth. And now that we have money transfers on our minds, that is the perfect segue to let you guys know about today's video sponsor, Panda Remit. Now, whether you're on vacation or planning a move overseas, we all need a way to move our money easily and efficiently. Panda Remit steps up to fill that need. International transfer fees can be brutal, but Panda Remit offers the best exchange rates and the lowest fees to keep your money in your pocket. With over 40 accepted currencies and transfers possible all across the world, Panda Remit makes sure that you have your money when and where you need it 24 seven, 365. Moving your money where you need it, when you need it, with the best exchange rates available, is sure to make your overseas experience just that much better and saves you the money you'd rather spend on your experiences. Whether you're planning your next vacation, sending money to family back home, or maybe you need to make a purchase overseas, download the Panda Remit app today, available on both Android and iOS. Head down to the description below, follow the link, and make sure you use my referral code to sign up to enjoy a $0 transfer fee on your first transfer, as well as a $5 coupon, just to, you know, add a little extra. Now, pretty much no matter where you wanna go in Thailand, it's 100% doable to hire a private taxi and it's really nice, it's convenient, you got the car to yourself, but the only thing that comes with this, just like everything else in life, you pay for the convenience. So in general, this is the most expensive way to get around, even more expensive than just flying sometimes, which is pretty crazy, honestly. Luckily, unlike where I'm from in America, public transportation in Thailand is readily available. Buses, trains, ferries, you name it. If you wanna go somewhere, you can definitely get there. And the best advice I could give you on how to save money if you're looking to get around the interior of Thailand, taking those public transportations is pay attention to what the Thais use. Thais in general are very money-minded, so they know how to save money. So anytime you hop on any type of transit, if there's a lot of Thai people, you're probably in the right spot when it comes to you know being budget-friendly. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I was in America, for sure, I mean, minus maybe my rent, and even at times not even that, for sure my most expensive expense every month was food. Now in Thailand, that hasn't changed a whole lot, really, I still spend the majority of money on food, but with you and myself, when you get to Thailand, the way you spend that money to buy food is gonna be a lot different, especially if you're looking for budget-friendly options. Now in America, if you wanna save money on eating, generally what you do is you go to the store, you buy groceries, you come home, you cook, and you save money. Now, not to say that that's not true in Thailand. It is, but only in select circumstances. So for somebody like me, who's single, usually eating meals by myself, it doesn't really make sense to go the grocery shopping route. One, just because it's hard to cook for one person, and two, for me it really doesn't save me that much money because I'm not able to buy things in bulk because I can't use it fast enough. Now if you're coming with a family, you've got a few mouths to feed, that's probably still a reasonable option. But if you're in a similar situation to mine or maybe you're just bringing your partner with you, 
The best way to be budget friendly and save money on food in Thailand, kind of like with the transportation, is eat how the Thais do. Go to the local Thai restaurants, go to the food markets at night, that is where you're gonna get the best bang for your buck when it comes to food at no real sacrifice in quality either. Now I want you to pay attention to what I said. I said local Thai restaurants. I've had a few people reach out and be like, yo, well I'm like going to restaurants and I feel like I'm spending too much money on food. Okay, well if you're going to Western restaurants, you're not really gonna be saving that much money. Yes, it's still cheaper to eat the same food here as it is in America, but by Thailand standard, Western food is very expensive. Even for low tier Western food here, you're paying usually two to three times what you would pay for a Thai meal. And most of the time, at least for me, I prefer the Thai food. If you spend some time in Thailand and you have any information on what you do to save money or maybe something that doesn't get thrown around enough that you feel like more people should know about, feel free to drop it down in the comments below. I know someone like myself a couple years ago before I came would have really appreciated that and I'm sure the rest of the community will as well. Once again, major shout out to Panda Remit for sponsoring today's video. If you would like to download the app, like I said, it is available on both iOS and Android and down in the description as well as the pinned comment, I will have their website linked to where you can get some more information if you'd like to check out their security protocols, kind of what they're about, things like that. Well, I am on the verge of getting rained on at any moment and I need to get some food before I am soaking wet. So I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.